Hey, Karina here, your Lucid Living Coach. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I am an intuitive transformational life coach and astrologer. If you want to continue getting my videos, you could subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell notification to let you know of my new videos that I put out. I do videos on moon cycles and pretty much all astrology and health and spiritual stuff. So let's get right into it. The full moon in Leo happening on January 28th at nine degrees. Whoa, there is a lot going on. Okay, the sun is in detriment when it is in Aquarius because its home is in Leo right across from it. So I've been feeling a little off. I'm a Leo, Leo rising, um, Mercury, Leo, North Node, Leo. So I have a lot of Leo planets and it felt like uh, it was really challenging trying to get my work done. Um, there could be blocks and we're going to experience this as we build up to the full moon. It's intense and it's emotional. Um, we have Jupiter conjunct the sun, which is expansive, fortunate conjunction. However, we have Uranus and Mars squaring over. We have Uranus and Mars squaring over to the moon in Leo, which is a, a full moon, which is intense. And we have Venus conjunct Pluto in Capricorn. We've got a lot going on here. We have Chiron trying the moon and Chiron sextiling over to Saturn and the sun and Jupiter. So we have a huge amount of planet on one side. This will be probably the last of the fire type of transit until spring. I mean, all the planets are in air, earth, and um, water signs. And we have one planet, which is um, Chiron, the wounded healer. I mean, think it's a planet, but it is uh, the wounded healer. Okay. And so that is really highlighting and holding the flame during this winter and the South Node. So the South Node is in Sagittarius, and that's what we're moving away from. And that's kind of trining, okay, a light trine with the wounded healer. So we're all moving out of our past wounding. And I'll get into that a little later in the video as I go through my notes that I typed up because I know I'm going to need them this time. But um, so full moon, Leo, nine degrees. All right. So Saturn is conjunct the south node. This rare transit happens roughly every 28 years. And this is pertaining to the United States. So if you live in the United States, I just wanted to pull up the chart and let you guys know what's going on. Because we just um, switched over powers in the White House, and I thought it was relevant. So Saturn is conjunct our south node. And our south node is where we have most of our experience, okay? And Saturn is bringing the, these restrictions and karma. And, it, you know, it's a, it's a rare transit for the United States. So that's why I wanted to talk about it. So there is some seriousness to this transit of what we as a nation are letting go of and moving away from because our South node is in the second house. Okay. The second house is like our value and how we make money and stuff like that. And we're seeing that the lessons of our past priorities, right? Cause our priorities have been about making money. And how as a nation, we valued the physical assets in that valued working a lot. Um, and our more core values that we're looking to move towards is more so the eighth house, which is transformation and depth 
and um, love and children because it's in it's in Leo and are like evaluating our, our connection and our heart centered creativity and feelings. Okay. Like things that are more of depth and the moon is conjunct our South node. So we have this also Saturn opposing the moon, and this could be bringing up a lot of restrictions too, in what's holding us back from really moving forward into the North node of Leo. This is showing us how the feminine energy of nurturing and mothering care is is what is of value now. And we as a nation have been dominated predominantly by masculine energy for so long that of the physical labor and strength is like being tough, fighting, aggression, stepping on people's heads to get to the top, work, and the material 3D abundance. Now, we are looking and feeling into the new earth, which is putting the feminine energy back in balance, where she is contributing to the nation. And now we're seeing it with our first female vice president of the United States. So that's a positive forward movement with equality and providing some more feminine female role models into our nation. So this is the first step of inviting that physical female role model. And just because someone is a male or a female doesn't necessarily that they they hold more of the feminine qualities, but we all have feminine and masculine qualities and we are just the physical embodiment of the feminine energy. So transiting Mercury is conjunct our moon. So as a nation, we're experiencing many emotions and we will be sharing our feelings, concerns, and expressing our needs going forward now in the new leaders of our country. Trump, this is his full moon because he he's a rising Leo, even though he's a Gemini. So he is ruled, his chart ruler is the sun and it is in detriment and there's a lot going on over there. So This is a full moon in Trump's 12th house, however, because it's the early degrees and it's conjunct um, Pluto. Okay. So this for him is very transformational. It's very, very emotionally intense. I couldn't imagine what he might be going through. He's probably feeling like he's failed and he is probably learning a lot about his, his self. And this is an, un, it's like an unconscious, like coming to the surface. It could be an unconscious awareness, but th- this is, this is definitely a transit that could change someone. Okay. And this is ending the cycle of Trump's daily routine and seeing now who may have been his enemies or his hidden enemies, because hidden enemies could be found in the 12th house. And if there's a full moon there, it could be highlighting and bringing some people to the surface. So we'll just keep our eyes and ears out for any headlines if they ever speak of him again. So for all the Leos out there, this is your completion. And we get one full moon a year and one new moon a year. And there's exceptions to that rule sometimes, but this is quite a powerful full moon being that Jupiter is conjunct the ruling planet of the sun and Venus is conjunct the all transforming planet of Pluto. I'm going to take a little sippy whippy of my kombucha. I'm on a 21 day challenge. No wine. All right. Sun is moving away from its conjunction with Saturn. We have been feeling the restrictions of energy, vitality, and positive light joining up with so serious Saturn. This is definitely having us think a little more seriously on what we want to manifest for our work as well as our career. Where is Aquarius and Taurus in your chart? These are the areas that are that we're experiencing a lot of action and movement okay things are coming things are going ideas are coming and going opportunities are coming and go- going okay one moment we think it's going this way and the other moment it's going the other way okay so unpredictability is a part of this year a lot of the planets major players 
are in Aquarius, which is the rules Uranus and Saturn. And speaking of Uranus and Saturn, we're having a square. They're kind of in some tension here. And this transit will be going on for all of 2021. Saturn, the planet of restriction and karma, is being challenged by the planet of wanting to break free and a revolution and limitation. It just wants things to change. So this will bring be bringing about change that is sudden and unexpected and maybe changes we we don't want. But okay, there's definitely some tension as well as frustration. The best thing for this year is to be flexible. Be ready for change as well as changing your perspectives. And this will help you navigate the year a little bit smoother. Life is full of ups and downs. We are in the season of air. 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 (laughs) Changes at first can be challenging, right? Until we start to see the manifestation of the new that it allowed for. There may be opportunities that would have never crossed our path if that change had never occurred, right? So Free yourself from the negative thinking and limiting aspects. Just sit back (laughs) and notice all the things around you shifting and ask yourself what area of your life is causing the most problems. Once discovered, start eliminating it. Eliminating self-limiting beliefs or being avoidant or anxious in relationships. We could stop sabotaging our own happiness or our commitments and responsibilities may be causing some tension and extra stress in our relationships and career, especially for Leos. This is happening in the seventh house and the 10th house. This year will also be more challenging for those that are in the creative and intuitive jobs like myself, because with Saturn and Uranus, Square could block these creative insights or connection with our intuition. So it's like having some patience, okay, with ourselves and the energy or the lack thereof. My advice is to try to think of other ways to navigate your work or use other techniques that will get the job done. Also, I take collodial gold. I don't know if anyone's heard of it. I know a lot of people's heard of the collodial silver, which is good for like the hair and the nails and the skin, collodial gold for the mind, um, body and spirit. So it really helps connect successfully with your higher self. And so if you're feeling blocked, maybe try to get some really good pure collodial gold. I feel like like I'm more in tune with the galaxies and my visions are a little more clear when I add just a few drops or a dropper under my tongue or in my water. It really helps, I think, also um, make our water more high energy. All right. So Uranus square to Jupiter, Uranus square the sun, all that. The Jupiter is the planet of expansion, right? And the sun is our ego and our vitality, stuff like that. And this lucky planet is bringing in some good and positive changes. Yes, they might be sudden. And that could be hard, especially for all of my fixed signs like Taurus, Scorpio, Aquarius and Leos. But I promise that these changes are changes in fortunes and big opportunities are ahead for us. So just stay positive and hopeful and flexible during this time. I know that all of you are all ready for change. (laughs) I know I am, but sometimes we get change in other areas in order for the dominoes to start falling in the right direction. So we could be experiencing sudden change in our careers or our relationships or our homes. And these could be also really positive um, information that we get. You know, maybe there's a, a a proposal and that could be in love or in career. So this isn't all just bad transits. I, I, I feel like they're very positive, but they're also very challenging and the energy is very intense. So overall this year with Uranus squaring all of these planets in Aquarius is promising change. 
especially the buildup of energy and tension that's happening. So we want to be careful of our own unpredictable, abrupt behaviors, because that in itself can create a lot of change. So we can't control the way that people act, but we can control the way that we react. And we want to keep that in mind during this time. So we got some Mars squaring over to the planets in Aquarius. We have Mars squaring over to the sun in Jupiter, and then Mars squaring over to the moon in Leo. So this is definitely a pump it up type energy. Okay. We have, we have Jupiter, which is expansion and luck and big, and it's expanding that sun, which is our vitality and ego and Mars is like sharing its energy, but then there's some tension going on. There needs to be some, um, adjustments and some, some thinking going on, right? This is, this is that pump up energy. So make sure to think things before you doing things. So be strategic and use this energy for launching new projects forward and taking risks in a positive direction. I advise you to stay away from people that trigger you. Those trigger people that poke you or gaslight you or manipulate you or just completely annoy you because this could turn into a violent energy in a bad way. Okay. Not that violence, there's a good violence, but in a bad way. So to try to make things happen or reach your goals when the energy is not there, we could be frustrated. And because we're getting these kinds of blocks when we just want to move forward. And this means to divert our energy to somewhere where the energy is flowing. Otherwise, we could come into more irritability and frustration and anger. And then we we take it off on the people around us. So start pushing those projects forward. And if the energy is not there, take breaks. Mars and the moon. So the moon is our emotion, okay? We're, we're wanting to express and create love and fun and creativity and all this, all this greatness that Leo has to offer. But there's this square happening here. And we could be experiencing some pretty intense frustrations and emotions. Anger is pretty high on this radar. You know, we're short-tempered. It's understandable to be frustrated and and angry when we have hit some block, when we just want to move forward. Release the tension by getting outside, exercising, or getting out of town, going on a short trip. All right. So Moon opposed Jupiter. All right. It's like Cancer and Sagittarius. Okay. We want to be, we want to be vulnerable. Okay. And we want to share our feelings. However, we need to be careful with who we're sharing it with. So you don't get vulnerable with the wrong person that could actually like take advantage of you or hold it against you later. Or use it as manipulation because we've got some Pluto Venus um, energy going on. You will want to also be mindful of overdoing it or even relapsing with this elevated good feeling or your, your troubled heart during this transit. It could be more po- problematic and maybe harder to control yourself. I have just a couple more transits to talk about, some aspects. One of the last but not least, Venus conjunct Pluto, exactly at 25 degrees. 25 is a seven in numerology, which is about its spirit, its luck, its partnership. And if you're single, this could be difficult for you, right? Because Venus, the planet of beauty and the things that we love and we want to surround ourselves with is conjunct Pluto, which is deep and intimate. And it's a transformational planet. We want that deep connection and that crazy sex. So if you're a couple, this is a good time to dig a little deeper in the toy box before the lights are turned off. We're all just wanting to connect 
to another in a more soulful, deep, and intense level. The only thing that I would warn you about is people wanting to overpower you or um, like possessiveness or jealousy or control manipulation tactics. Um, So try to keep it on the level of infatuation and falling deeply in love. It is okay to fall in love, but just make sure it's with the right person. All right, Chiron. Chiron, the wounded healer, shining the moon. Healing is available to us all. We could be attracting those nurturing, mothering type of people. But if you have any wounds surrounding abandonment, loss, and trauma, like most of us from 2020, if you had it before 2020, I'm sure you have. These triggers can be resurfacing. So we have to dig a little deeper for more healing to happen. And this is a good thing because when things start to surface, we get to heal through them, purge, and get rid of some of that negative energy that could just be suppressed in our unconscious. Okay, so Chiron sextile Saturn, Chiron sextile Sun and Jupiter. I mean, there's a lot of this wounded healing going on. So we want to really utilize that, yeah, to our best. And um, I have this, do you know what this is? Okay, the citrine quartz. This is a really good crystal to work with during this full moon in Leo. It really helps spark creativity and energy and vitality. And um, yeah, I love to wear my citrine necklace before I get creative in my art studio. So yeah, I highly recommend this. And I have my, it's a hematite and this helps ground energy and also absorbs and protects us from negative energy. So yeah, I think that's all that I wanted to talk about for this full moon in Leo. Yes, it's a lot. It's a lot, but it's necessary. Okay. No one said it would be easy. But no one also didn't say it was going to be this hard. (laughs) That's a Sheryl Crow song. Um, But I will tell you, it is worth it. All right. So let's get to healing. Let's get to transmuting the more intense energies and shift. So blow up that floaty, like I always say. And enjoy the ride because it is a windy time with lots of unexpected, unpredictable change. So if you would like a personal transit reading, I'm doing um, for $60 right now. And if you'd like a personal bird chart reading where I go through your whole chart and look at all your planets and let you know what house and what sign they're in and what aspects that they're making and looking at the transit as well to prepare you from for any upcoming events or energies so you could work with it better. So thank you for joining. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for subscribing to my channel. I have a goal to get to a thousand subscribers. So please share and please subscribe so I can start doing super chats and doing uh, card readings. That would be super fun live. YouTube makes us work really hard um, to get to those kind of perks. And also to let you know, if you didn't know already, I'm launching my second anthology for the Break Free series. It's called Break Free to Peace, Love, and Unity. And it is a collective book talking about our journey and our tips and little nuggets on how we broke free to be more loving and unifying in this world of so much separation and division right now. So my launch is February 26th. For the special launch, our Amazon book will be only $1.99, which will help support me and all the beautiful authors. 
So I appreciate you and thanks for your support. And I will see you on my next video. Peace out, your Lucid Living Coach, Karina.